Now, in true Nike style, there has been a lot of hype surrounding this shoe, and I also think it's a very bold move from the brand, naming it after one of the most iconic trail races in the world that just so happens to be run on a super challenging mountainous route, and it tends to be run in muddy, wet, slippery conditions. Now, if you've followed the channel for any time, or you've run in Nike trail shoes before, then you are probably fully aware that their shoes tend to struggle for grip and traction in those type of conditions. Uh, to be fair to this, it's got a pretty good lug depth on that outsole and it is a very nice looking shoe. So let's dive into the video and find out if the Nike Zoom X Zagama lives up to its name. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and you are watching Run For Adventure. It's great to have you all back. So it's that day again when I tend to hold my breath, cross my fingers really tight and hope that Nike have managed to produce a trail running shoe that can handle the technical trails that I tend to run on. Uh, we recently tested out their new Pegasus Trail 4 and I was actually pleasantly surprised with how that shoe performed. But again, it did really struggle when it came to running in wet conditions. I didn't have a great deal of traction from the outsole in the mud and the upper didn't drain very well. And it was actually like running with a couple of sponges on my feet. Right, let's give you a few facts and figures first and then we're gonna be lacing them up, hitting the trails and giving the Zagama its first run. It would be great if we could find some sort of wet, muddy stuff out there today, but I think that's gonna prove difficult because we are having some very hot weather in the UK at the moment. But we are gonna be packing these up and taking them across to the mountains of Chamonix where we will continue to test them out there. They retail for a penny under 145 pounds here in the UK so not actually as expensive as I thought it was going to be when I first heard that Nike were going to be producing this shoe. Uh, weight wise in a UK 9.5 they come in at 316 grams and you know holding it here in my hand it does feel like a lot of that weight is in that deep midsole it feels quite bottom heavy so it's going to be interesting to feel how balanced the shoe is out on the trails and you know if I'm honest with it being named after the Zagama race I, I thought it might be a bit lighter and a bit more racy in feel. Uh, we've got a four mil heel offset, which I personally think is a great move by Nike. I tend to run my sort of trail shoes at a four, five or six mil offset. So that should work out well for me. Moving up to the upper construction and we've got quite a lot of stuff going on here. So we've got lots of different fabrics. We've got overlay stitching, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I think Nike have gone for a sort of twin engineered mesh construction. We've got some nice perforations around the midfoot and that toe box just to give you a bit more airflow to aid with breathability. We've got quite a thin gusseted tongue internally in the shoe, but I'm happy to see that Nike have worked in some sort of zonal padding where the laces sit. So that should really help when it comes to comfort across the top of your foot. We got some overlays around those lace eyelets and the toe box for a bit of extra durability and Nike have sort of wrapped that outsole up around the toe just for a bit of added protection to sort of work as a toe bumper. We've also got a lot going on in the back end of the shoe. So a nice bit of substance from a sturdy heel counter, a little handy pull tab, We've got, again, some extra sort of zonal padding internally in the heel for added comfort and heel lockdown. And then it's all finished off with Nike's sort of uh, trail gaiter built into the shoe. Very similar to what we've seen on some of the Pegasus models and the Wild Horse models. Working down to the midsole, and this is probably the area of the shoe that most people are really excited about because this is the first time that Nike have put their Performance Zoom X compound into a trail running shoe. Uh, this is the same compound they put in their sort of performance road shoes, very popular shoes like the Vaporfly Next Percent and the Alphafly Next Percent. Um, I was a little bit worried when I heard they were putting this in a trail shoe, knowing how sort of delicate, fragile, soft and unstable that compound can be in their road shoes. I was thinking that's never going to work in a trail shoe, but it actually feels like a, a different blend of the Zoom X. So it feels a little bit firmer, a little bit denser and a little bit heavier. So that should really help when it comes to sort of durability and stability out on the trails. And finally, that all important outsole. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Video, we've actually got a pretty good lug depth on the Zigama. Uh, like Nike always do, there's not a lot of information about the specs of the shoe on their website. No lug depth, so I had to get the ruler out, measure them. 
I think the deepest lugs on that outside are around about five mil. So that should give a pretty good amount of traction when running in muddy conditions. Not fully convinced by an exposed midsole there, especially for a shoe that's supposed to offer good traction and grip in wet, muddy conditions. I think a full-blown rubber outsole would have been a much better idea. I'd like to have seen some grip across that midfoot. There has been some pretty bold claims made, made by Nike about the performance of this outsole. And in fact, let me just read them out to you what they say on their website. Excuse me while I just look down at my pad to take get the notes. So it's been developed for great grip and stability so you can keep climbing to reach those personal highs. When the going gets grimy and gritty, whether it is challenging rocky landscapes going uphill or steep slick declines down treacherous, tra treacherous trails, you can feel fully confident in the level of grip it's going to give you. So like I said, pretty bold claims there. And you know, it's quite easy to write paragraphs like that on your website, but it's pretty tricky to develop and design a, an outsole that actually gives you all that performance. So I think it's about time we tested those claims out. So let's get the Zagamas on our feet and let's hit the trails. First things first is, it is so humid out here today, <laughs> I am sweating buckets. Also, I'm doing this run on the Monday after my Sunday long run. So that was our last long run we did in the UK before we were gonna head out to France. Uh, you'd have just seen the video, we did a pretty challenging 18 miles out on the Jolly Roger route with 2,500 feet of elevation. So, as you can imagine, my legs are pretty heavy, pretty stiff, but they actually feel way better than they th I thought they would. So either I'm recovering really quickly or this new Nike shoe is working really well. First thing we're gonna talk about is the fit of the shoe. So definitely true to size. Uh, I got it in my usual 9.5 UK and it fits like a glove. Just the right length in the toe. And when I say fits like a glove, I really mean fits like a glove. It's holding my midfoot really well. That gusseted tongue makes me feel really locked into the shoe. So when I started the run on the Towns, I had a bit of off camber stuff and I had no lateral or medial slippage in that upper. And I just felt really stable running on that off camber stuff, which is a great start for a Nike shoe. Width in the toe box is pretty good. Uh, I haven't got the widest foot in the world, but it is very shallow in depth. You know, Nike keep doing this in their trail shoes. I keep noticing this and not an issue for me because I haven't got a deep foot, but if you did have a deep foot, I think you'd struggle with that shallow depth in the toe box. I also mentioned it back at the flat that Nike had put a quite a thin gusseted tongue in the shoe, but they'd also worked in those little zones of padding. And you know, they've done this in shoes uh, previously and I've always found it works really well. So you've got that thin tongue, so you get a nice connection around the midfoot, but you've got those little bits of padding where the laces are so it feels nice and plush across the top of your foot. I think this is something that some of the other brands should sort of take note and start doing in their shoes because it works really well. And I feel really secure in the back end of the shoe. So in that heel, feel nice and locked in. So the upper is just fitting extremely well. And I actually thought the upper fit in my foot shape well when we tested out the new Pegasus Trail 4 as well. So. I think a lot of Nike shoes just work well for my foot shape. So I have to say it, we're only two miles in. We've got a long way to go in the run. We're going to hopefully do sort of six or seven miles. But first impressions are super positive. And I've got to be honest, I am pleasantly surprised so far. But anyway, like I said, seven miles tonight. So let's crack on with the run. <music> Okay, four and a half miles in now, and I think we should discuss the part of the shoe that you're probably all waiting to hear about, and that is the Zoom X midsole. So this is the first time that Nike have put that performance cushioning into a trail shoe, and you know, there's been a lot of hype about it, a lot of people are excited about it. My first impressions are that 
it does feel quite different to the ZoomX compound you get in their performance road shoes. And, you know, I personally think that's a good thing. Firstly, it definitely feels like a firmer blend of the compound. And that is actually working really well in the trail shoe. I had my doubts about it. I thought if it was very similar to that road compound, it was going to be super unstable on technical trails. And uh, it actually feels super planted. I've run some tricky rocky sections. Obviously out here on the towns, we've got lots of sort of undulating ground and rabbit holes to deal with and I've had no issues when it comes to stability. Very similar to what Nike did in the Pegasus Trail 4, you're sunk into that midsole so you've kind of got a guide rail around your foot and again I think that really helps. It sort of gives you that cradle around your foot and you're a bit lower to the ground with that four mil heel offset again working really well and at home I said about the weight being sort of 316 grams in a UK 9.5. I thought it was going to feel a bit heavy and a bit bottom heavy, but actually when you're in the shoe and you're running in the shoe, it actually feels nicely balanced. So that ZoomX midsole in a trail shoe is working far better than I thought it would. So, um, so far so good. I'm actually really enjoying the run, but let's crack on. We've got sort of two or three miles to go till we get back home. Right, let's get running. <music> sweating bucket. The sun isn't out and there's actually quite a strong breeze blowing. It is so muggy and so humid, it's ridiculous. I don't think I've sweated this much on a run for ages. But we're pretty much done. We've got sort of half a mile to go until we get back to um, the flat. We're going to have done just over seven miles and super happy with the run. First front, my body feels great. Feels like it's recovered really quick from yesterday's challenging run, which is a massive thumbs up for me. It's so good to feel like I'm getting a bit of fitness back, getting back to my old self after sort of two years of ups and downs and not really putting a lot of training volume in. And secondly, this new Zagama felt really good. Can't get over how well it fits my foot shape, how secure I feel in that upper and how stable I felt underfoot on that Zoom X midsole. So big thumbs up so far, but let's get back to the flat and let's break down the performance of this new Nike trail shoe in a bit more detail. Well, that went a lot better than I was expecting. Unfortunately, we didn't come across any mud or wet trails to really test out the grip and traction of that new outsole on the Zagama, but it did feel like a really grippy shoe, you know? Good levels of uh, traction and grip on the soft sand and the loose gravelly trails really felt like those lugs were digging into the ground under my foot. Obviously, the biggest test is going to come in wet conditions and I actually think the lug depth is going to work really well, but it all comes down to how sticky that rubber compound is, especially on wet rock. So I guess we're just going to have to wait to find out. With it being a deeply stacked midsole, or should I say looking like a deeply stacked midsole, because Nike have actually sunk you down into the shoe and I was a lot closer to the ground than I was expecting, which was definitely a positive thing. It, I was surprised at the levels of sort of ground feel and connection I got and it was a lot more than I was expecting. Uh, that blend of ZoomX compound is very different, however, to what I've experienced in their sort of road shoe lineup. Definitely a bit firmer, but that is a good thing because it makes the shoe feel nice and planted and stable. Uh, picked up a couple of sections of road in the shoe, like all Nike trail shoes, you know, it ran very well in that environment and I'd happily bounce along all day on the road in these. Um, I would say if you're sort of expecting the same performance you get, say, from your vapor flies or alpha flies from this Zoom X compound, then you might be left a little bit disappointed. Um, it doesn't really give you uh, them high levels of energy return, and I'd say it doesn't maybe feel as exciting as the Zoom X in their road shoes. But again, still really happy with it. It felt very comfortable and I think it's a good performing midsole. I touched on it out on the run and that is the weight and the fact that it actually ran a lot lighter than I thought it would considering it weighs 316 grams. I would still personally like to see this shoe a little bit lighter, a little bit racier. Maybe getting that weight under 300 grams, more similar to what the weight of the Pegasus Trail 4 is because I thought that shoe was a really well weighted balanced trail shoe. I think that little bit of saving could make a big difference to the performance. Don't get me wrong, while I was out there running, I wasn't really giving uh, the weight of the shoe a lot of thought. You know, I wasn't running along thinking, God, this shoe's heavy. But I think, again, 
you know, a little bit of weight saving would make it feel a bit more nimble, a bit more responsive underfoot. And at the end of the day, you know, there is quite a lot of shoe here. Another big positive for me was I started the run, I tied those laces down tight and they didn't work loose as I ran through those seven miles. I didn't have to stop and retie them. I just felt really held around the midfoot and that is a big win for me. Uh, that thin gussety tongue felt great. Them zones of padding Nike have worked in work so well. Again, it allowed me to pull those laces down tight, get a real good lockdown, but it still remains super comfy across the top of my foot. And I think that had a big part to play when it came to the shoe feeling nice and stable and nice connected, even in those technical areas. However, I did mention it earlier, the toe box does seem to be quite shallow in depth. It's got pretty good width on it, but I don't know whether you can see that on the camera. There's not a lot of depth to that toe box. Now, I haven't got a deep foot, it's quite shallow. And yes, it was super comfy on that run out there, no problems at all, but it was just a short seven miles. And I'm not fully convinced that um, over a longer run as my feet expand, especially in hot conditions, that that toe box might become a little bit constrictive. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how that volume and how the shoe handles distance. And we'll definitely be getting some long runs in the shoe very soon and hopefully around the beautiful mountains of Chamonix. So wrapping up after my first outing in Nike's new Zumex Zagamas. And you know, I have been really surprised with how well they ran out there this afternoon. And I'm actually looking forward to to getting back in the shoe and putting more miles in over the coming weeks. Maybe testing them out a bit more thoroughly on wet, muddy trails, that'd be great, but also on some longer, more challenging runs. I still think the shoe has been a bit overhyped by Nike, but you know, that's what they do. And I'm not fully convinced it does deserve the Zigama name, but I think it is another good sized step in the right direction when it comes to Nike trails and the shoes they're developing. And that can only be a positive thing. Uh, really hope you've enjoyed the video and you found it helpful and if you have you know what to do guys smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already but don't forget to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when we upload any new exciting running content i've left a link for the new zoom exagamas from nike in the description below if you want to find out any more information and if you manage to pick up a pair and you're running in them it'd be great to get your feedback as well guys so get in the comments below and let us know how it's going uh, i am off to finish packing and loading up the adventure bus because we are heading out on our road trip tomorrow afternoon can't wait to get back out in the mountains and bring you guys along so you can follow all the fun and games we're going to get up to out there but until next time guys thanks for watching and supporting the channel it's really appreciated and as always stay safe and keep on running nice and stable and nice connected even in those technical areas fly in here, would you believe it? <laughs> He's taking the piss.